In the never-ending race for innovation, car manufacturers drop some seriously big bucks for research and development to outdo the rest and to ultimately ensure that their lemonade stand is more profitable than the one next door. However, that doesn't mean that some cars do not overstay the welcome and follow the legendary if it ain't broke, don't fix it philosophy. Right next to me, I have the 2016 Toyota Foreigner, a vehicle that's as ancient as the infamous Nissan 370Z that was originally sold in 2008 in Japan and remained largely unchanged until 2020. This generation of the Foreigner, however, was introduced for the 2010 model year and you can still buy it brand new at a Toyota dealership in 2022. We have a true modern day dinosaur on our hands. They really don't make them like they used to, except they still do. <laughs> At Toyota, they still do, but doesn't even belong in 2022. Now the first clue that the Forerunner is not from this decade or even from the previous one is this drivetrain. Under the hood we have the 4 liter V6 producing 270 horsepower and 278 pound-feet of torque paired with this ancient and struggling and just painfully outdated 5-speed automatic transmission. The whole drivetrain is at least 15 years old at this point and you feel it every time you start the car and every time you drive it. Now the second and a bit more apparent clue that the Forerunner is unapologetically ancient is this interior. It genuinely feels like I am in a 2010, 2011, 2012 Toyota product. We have lots of giant silver characteristic of Toyota, the silver plastic buttons, um, giant dials, giant toggles, we have HVAC controls that are just so simple and so straightforward. Everything is so simple and straightforward in this interior. It is an absolute joy to use. I love how analog, I love how physical everything is. And the gauges are analog as well. We just have this tiny little Tetris screen in the middle to give you some minimal information. Uh, kind of everything you need to know, nothing extra. Nothing, uh, nothing over the top at all. But again, everything is old. Now, the reason I'm talking about a 2016 Forerunner interior in 2022 is because the new Forerunners, the brand new ones, have pretty much the same interiors. The layout of the buttons is a bit different. Um, and obviously the uh, infotainment was updated with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but for the most part, it still is the same interior at, in a brand new Forerunner from the dealership today. And right now we're in the trim cone limited, which I guess is not entirely true because they will be in limited numbers after they stop producing them. But anyways, the limited trim is kind of a more civilized version of the 4Runner. It is focused more on luxury rather than the off-roading capabilities of the vehicle. So we have more body kits outside, which kind of lowers the ground clearance um, for the roads, of course, and for the limited trim we do get these beautiful dark red seats we will get leather on the interior uh, leather on the doors as well another very important distinction between the limited trim and the other four-wheel drive trims of the forerunner is that only the limited trim gets the full-time four-wheel drive as opposed to the part-time all-wheel drive and other four-wheel drive models of the forerunner the main difference between part-time four-wheel drive and full-time four-wheel drive is that the vehicle stays in rear-wheel drive mode until the driver chooses to engage the front wheels with the flip wheel switch or pull in of the lever, whereas in the limited we have full-time four-wheel drive, meaning that the car takes away control from the driver a little bit and chooses when to engage the front wheels based on the driving conditions, whereas the part-time four-wheel drive, the driver is the main decision maker in the situation. Another important distinction between the limited trim and the other forerunners is that besides these hugely spacious rear seats, 
we do have a third row of seats that are tiny and really made for children. However, they are there if you need them. And when we open the trunk, we do see just how spacious it really is. We have the third row of the seats that props up and clicks in just like that, which basically minimizes any sort of cargo space that you wanted to have. You don't have it anymore. However, with the third row of seats down, we do have a huge, huge cargo capacity. One big problem though is that if you're trying to load anything, the floor is so bloody tall that you might be struggling to load some stuff in that is extra heavy and requires the grip from below. And the age of the 4Runner truly shows in the driving experience as well. Right now, we are on a gravel road. Obviously, we will not be able to test out the off-roading capabilities of the vehicle. But now that we're behind the wheel of the 4Runner, I do want to point out just how trucky, if that's a word, uh, just how trucky the driving experience really is. This is so different from anything you would drive that was made after like 2017 and 2018, even up to 2015. All the uh, all the car-based crossovers, like you know the the Rav4 and the CX-5 and uh, Pathfinder, even right, all of them uh, drive a lot more like cars than body and frame SUVs and off-roading SUVs like this one and this just genuinely feels like an absolute dinosaur the closest thing that I drove uh, to this that felt uh, similar to this was a I think a 2015 or a 2014 Ram truck Ram 1500 and this is exactly what it feels like it's a giant tall lifted very wallowy very all over the place SUV the engine is kind of weak it sounds terrible um, the gearbox is in dire need for more gears five speed just doesn't cut it it really just doesn't cut it especially when you look at the fuel economy it is absolutely abysmal but on that in a second Woo! <laughs> A little bit of uh, slidey fun on a snowy gravel road in the Forerunner. Honestly, uh, it feels extra satisfying in the Forerunner just because of how much of an adventure it feels like it is. Um, you don't feel in as much of a control over the Forerunner, at least on the road. When we're on the gravel road, it makes sense. It feels at home. This feels perfectly natural. This feels like that's where it belongs. This is where it should be. <laughs> the engine is good here right on the gravel road dirt snow I'm sure it's an absolute beast in the snow and I kind of wish that I had this for my Miata in the uh, historic snowfall in Toronto a few days ago yeah this is a very odd experience and I just don't think it belongs in the city where it spends probably 98 or 99 percent of the time vehicles like this will spend in the city mall crawling as they call it right and i don't think it's as abysmal to drive on the streets as the infamous wranglers or maybe even the broncos but the broncos are i heard they're better i'm not sure haven't driven uh, any of them in person except for the uh, t uh the yg wrangler I haven't driven them but the Wrangler is infamous for their horrible on-road experience and terrible aerodynamics and all that and the noise, yada, yada, yada. But Bronco, I heard uh, very, very good things about it. Haven't had a chance to get my hands on one. So if you're watching and you have a Bronco or you know somebody that has a Bronco, why don't you just let me drive it for a day or two? I don't think you'll regret it. And some good video will come out of it as well. But now that we are at an intersection on the street, oof, yes, wallow, 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 every little turn, it just, it feels like it's about to flip. It is such a truck driving experience. 
this vessel is so huge it feels more fitting to sing a sea shanty while doing it hey may the wellman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum and that's exactly what it feels like to drive a forerunner it is a giant giant vessel and it feels like an absolute massive unwieldy and slow and surprisingly loud in the engine department vehicle you don't feel anything through the steering wheel the suspension is fine uh, it, it soaks up the bumps nicely but at the same time it bounces a lot there's a lot of bounce going on you go over a little speed bump a little pothole and you just you're gonna bounce two or three times after that but the real deal breaker for me is as expected the fuel consumption I've been averaging in the city I've been averaging around 19 liters per 100 kilometers right now in winter on some uh, on some grabber tires 19 19 I'll put it right here what that is in miles per gallon on the highway and in the mixed cycle uh, I was able to get somewhere around 15 16 but even that is just absolutely horrendous absolutely terrible the sheer daily cost of driving the forerunner is simply unjustifiable in my personal opinion i can't justify putting 19 liters 18 19 liters per 100 kilometers into this vehicle it just doesn't make sense this might have been acceptable in 2010 when gas was half the price of what it is now but in 2022 with the modern gas prices and the way the economy is going this is a very non-viable city driving and daily driving option unfortunately and as much as i like it for the occasion and the dinosaur that it is it doesn't make sense in the modern times it genuinely doesn't make sense anymore and what's also kind of funny and kind of irritating is that we have this green eco but uh, eco uh, light in the dashboard and the eco uh, bar that's telling you how economically you're driving and you keep it in the eco it's like it's taunting you you keep it in the eco while driving and the average is still showing like 16 17 18 19 liters per 100 kilometers like that eco light is just taunting you it feels sarcastic but despite all that I genuinely like driving the forerunner I think mainly for how much of an adventure it feels like to me because of how different it is from everything else that's out right now and I think if I were looking for a dedicated off-roader this kind of would be a no-brainer I think this or the Jeep or the Bronco I think these would be uh, no-brainers but at the same time as a vehicle, as a multi-purpose vehicle, I just don't think it makes sense at all. It's too specialized. It's too focused. And it's very good at doing what its, its focus is, off-roading, right? But for daily driving and for everything else, it's not very good, unfortunately. In conclusion, in my personal opinion, I don't think the Forerunner is a sensible purchase in 2022, especially not for the price that they're asking for it. Unless you have uh, the ability to pay multiple thousands of dollars, if not, if not tens of thousands of dollars over MSRP in some cases. If you don't have that ability, but you are looking for a reliable SUV for a whole family that you might not necessarily use for off-roading don't even think about the forerunner to be honest unless you're dead set on having this particular vehicle and you're super passionate about the forerunner and the forerunner and then this is exactly what you've been wanting the whole time drive it experience it for a bit and then make up your decision don't rush into it it's a lot more attractive on paper than it is in real life conditions unless you're somewhere deep in the woods of course thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one